Our big focus this hour, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has inaugurated projects worth more than 4,000 crore rupees in Kochi. Out of the major projects dedicated to the nation, the new dry dock and the international ship repair facility of Cochin Shipyard Limited are touted to be infrastructural game changers. The new dry dock has been built at a cost of 1,799 crore rupees and is expected to augment India's capacity to build large liquefied natural gas carriers. It's also equipped to build capsize and Suez mass ve uh, vessels as well as oil rigs and can handle aircraft carriers up to 70,000 tons displacement. Additionally, the International Ship Repair Facility is a 970 crore rupee infrastructural project that shall bolster India's repair credentials. Set up on 42 acres of lease premises of the Cochin Port Authority, the repair facility can accommodate seven vessels of 130 meter length simultaneously. The inauguration of these facilities are a crucial development as conven uh, conventionally India builds few commercial ships. The global shipbuilding market is primarily concentrated in China, South Korea as well as Japan. Meanwhile, over 50% ship breaking happens in India at the Alang Ship Breaking Yard. This brings us to the question, what's needed to build ships in India and will Kochi be a new hub for India-made ships? Joining us at this point uh, live on the broadcast is Captain Sham Kumar, Indian Navy warship captain. We also have uh, Commodore AJ Singh, former Navy, joining us live. I presume uh, he's a Navy officer. Uh, also with us is Akash Jindal, economist. Uh, Madhav Nalapa, the editorial director of the Sunday Guardian, also is with us live. Uh, let me uh, begin with you first, uh, Captain Kumar, uh, on uh, you know what the potential really is for India in shipbuilding uh, in this sector, and uh, where we are currently, and you know what we can perhaps do to further achieve our true potential. Uh, thank you. The uh, the maritime power of any uh, country. It goes by its military might, the naval fleet, the shipbuilding capability, and the repair facilities, ports and harbors. And in this regard, when we talk about our military abilities, we all know the Indian Navy is uh, uh, reaching far-flung areas and giving its impact onto the global uh, scenario. The shipyards that we have in India are public sector undertakings and the new uh, shipyards which are uh, helping us in building the more uh, merchant mercantile as well as the warships for Indian Navy and Coast Guard. And we surely have um, much more to do. The Mezgon Dock Limited, for that matter, the Garden Reach uh, shipbuilders at Kolkata, uh, CSL Kochi, which we are talking about, then the Goa, the Hindustan Shipyard Limited. We have made uh, quite a bit of, we have private Viranjam port, we discussed in your channel, which has just come uh, just uh, 200 kilometers south of Kochi at uh, next to uh, the Trivandrum, uh, which is the largest uh, docking facility for, uh, for, for the ship uh, yard facility for the country. See the, the location of uh, Kochi uh, Shipyard Limited being onto the sea lanes of communication from Southeast Asia to to the Middle East and even to the Europe through Suez Canal makes it very, very uh, important for us to see that this area is visited by thousands of ships in this, this, this direction. And therefore, uh, apart from Singapore or maybe Japan, Korea, China shipbuilding uh, repair facilities and building facilities, of course, as you said, repair facilities also matters. So when we are talking of a very uh, uh, high depth uh, uh, Vaninjam port, which is going to be birthing ships, and then they also will need some repair facilities. So both the things coming at Kochi, which is the only shipyard which has made the aircraft carrier of 40,000 plus and made the tankers of 1 lakh 10 plus in past. I have been uh, part of this uh, place. Uh, I have commanded a ship across this uh, CSL harbor. I have been seeing the growth of the place uh, day and out in that harbor itself. And so even I had visited the and the, uh, the process of building up of aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant, uh, when I was director of aircraft carrier project. So this CSL is growing uh, uh, definitely uh, day by day. It has produced the largest ship. It has the, we have the aircraft carrier, which can only be docked here and repaired here. And now with this added facility of uh, higher growth, higher repair facilities, which has been uh, probably harbored in the, in the channel, as well as onto the land landed by the, uh, Cochin Port uh, Trust Authority. So the government's plan to expand this 
CSL into a major hub onto a strategic route is definitely going to give a big impetus for the country in ship building. It is going to give a technological development and advancement and a clear message to the seafarers across the world who travels through this sea lanes of communication that India is a destination, one stop for making and even also repairing. Of course, we were always leading in the breaking uh, shipping uh, ship uh, uh, industry. So these three things together, making, repair and even breaking, I think it makes the circle complete. And uh, though although we have very less shipbuilding capacity compared to the world shipping, but I think this is the right step in the right direction. And Prime Minister himself dedicating this to the nation also gives a very uh, clear message that we have a trust, we have political will, and we are into the right direction. Over to you there. Yes, uh, let me in fact also uh, take that across to uh, uh, Commodore AJ Singh, who's also with us. Commodore AJ Singh, uh, as far as uh, these two projects uh, that the Prime Minister has inaugurated today, how big an infrastructural game changer do you expect them to be? Yeah. I think uh, it's a very significant development. You know, when the prime, ever, since the prime, ever since 2014, when the Prime Minister took over, there was a distinct shift towards focusing on India's maritime development. India is fundamentally a maritime nation. You know, 90% of our trade travels over the sea. 80% of our energy comes from the sea. We are the largest naval power in the Indian Ocean. So, and we are surrounded by the three, sea on three sides. And we have a very strategic location in the Indian Ocean, right in the center, jutting a thousand miles into the Indian Ocean. So, India's maritime credentials uh, required us to develop the maritime capacity. Komro AJ Singh, can you hear me? Okay, I think we've lost his connection there, unfortunately. Let me bring in Akash Jindal uh, quickly into the broadcast. Akash Jindal, uh, as far as uh, you know, the shipbuilding is concerned, where does India stand currently and, and uh, what more needs to be done to ensure we are a destination for the world? Akash? Okay, I think we've lost him there. Madhav Nalapat, are you there with us? Yes, indeed, I am. Professor Nalapath, uh, as far as these, you know, these projects today are concerned, you know, how big a game changer are they going to be? Could Kochi now become, you know, the shipbuilding destination for the world? Uh, where does India stand currently, sir? What more needs to be done? What all is being done to ensure this? Well, Ray, uh, I'd like to say that from 2014 onwards, uh, the policy has made has been very explicit that it is land, air, sea, and space that are all very, very important uh, segments where defense is concerned. Uh, there was a very high for concentration in the past on land. And certainly land is very important. And certainly our land borders are not secure uh, on two fronts. Uh, in fact, if you go to Myanmar, uh, uh, two and a half fronts, if you put it that way. But the reality is the Navy is an extremely important service. And it is, as, as has correctly been said, it, the, the maritime routes are the lifeblood of commerce and, and one of the main arteries of growth so far as India is concerned. So this comprehensive bringing together of land, air, sea and space, that is the policy of this government, has been a, a, a truly game changing. Now, as far as Cochin is concerned, it, it has got enormous potential, uh, no question about it. And all I can say over there is that, you know, it has taken so long. It has taken about 65, 70 years for us to, uh, to really exploit the kind of potential that we already have. And I'm very happy that it's now taking place. And this ship breaking, yes, it's important. Uh, ship repair is even more important, quite frankly, but ship breaking is basically for scrap. I mean, you know, you have, for example, in the US, where carriers are sold for one hundredth of a dollar each because it's it's supposed to be scrap. Ship repair is much more significant, and that has got a huge impetus in the last uh, few years. And now shipbuilding has taken, uh, you know, a, a front stage again in the last few years. And I think 
uh, for you going for for uh, repair and then you going for building and i quite agree that india can be one of the major shipbuilding countries in the world india can be one of the major ship repairing countries in the world and ships from all across from all the friendly countries can come to india uh, to be repaired and india can in a sense produce ships for the whole world it is you know it is a sad reflection on past policy that for so long uh, countries with much smaller uh, ability to really utilize manpower and to utilize other uh, resources have leapt so far ahead of india in ship building i think we are catching up and i and and for that i think cochin shipyard is now a very important symbol of how fast we are catching up. ji uh, let me uh, in fact uh, quickly take that across to uh, uh, aj singh as well once again i'm being told he's back with us commodore singh can you hear me now yes i can yes, so i'm sorry singh, i think we have had, lost had, the connection yeah, we had lost you earlier please complete your point yeah so what i was saying was yes it's very important what is developing in cochin shipyard as i heard professor nalapa just saying we have lag behind we have barely we have less than 1% of the global ship building market so while it's not going to be an overnight game changer it's not going to some miracles not going to happen but we are on the right right path you know in ship building we know that 90% of the global ship building market is with just three countries china japan and south korea they've they've even uh, sort of uh, eclipsed to europe and the us which used to be the traditional ship building markets for india to get back into that it is not only about building it's not only about shipyards it's about creating the right policy framework to ensure that we become competitive with these countries in ship building so firstly we need to build the capacity which we are doing and then once we have the capacity we need to be competitive and competitive enough to be able to take them on now india despite 90% of our trade uh, being sea born and 80% of our energy as i mentioned being sea born hardly 10% of our trade actually travels on indian ships it's all ships which are flagged to you know flags of convenience we need to change that because ship building is a strategic industry and this is something the government must recognize it has still not been recognized as a strategic core national industry which it requires to be done now that as far as ship building is concerned so we need to we still have a long way to go but a right start has been made shipyards don't get built overnight it's a slow process it's a capital intensive uh, uh, endeavor and so we are moving in the right direction as far as ship repair goes you know even our ships even the indian flag ships all go for ship repair to singapore or dubai or some or, or even uh, smaller countries because we were so far again not competitive we were inefficient we while our ship would get repaired in a week's time in singapore or dubai it would take 3 months to do so in india so we needed state of the art ship repair facilities with you know the with adequately qualified people to build up the same kind of efficiencies as we see in other countries now that we've created this ship repair facility we must prove that we are up to the up to the task we will be able to compete with these other countries like singapore and dubai and we will only then will we be able to attract our own ships to come back to our yards for ship repair the third aspect is ship recycling now india was the global leader in ship breaking you know along was famous but it was again inefficient it was archaic it was environmentally unfriendly and we lost a lot of space to bangladesh and other countries which left ahead of us in ship breaking or what is now called ship recycling because a lot of ship material is now being not only being part of it of course has to go as scrap but a lot of it is being recycled and so it's become it's become more state of the art more technology intensive and i think there's a third step india is looking at now as far as ship building goes you know while it's too we are still too at too early a stage to start building those huge ships of 100000 tons and 150000 tons lng carriers cng carriers which china and all are doing we must start by focusing on a niche area we should start building green ships you know the future is green now we must now that we have created this capability we must uh introduce the kind of technology that is required for us to break into a niche area of ship building so that at least in one area we are the, we are the global center of excellence so we build green ships we build ships in the tonnage of let's say 20000 tons 30000 tons uh not not those 100000 ton and 150000 ton leviathans we will come to that when we have the adequate capacity but really to make a mark in the global ship building industry and to ensure that these facilities which are coming up become game changers in the on the global stage i think we have to we have to start small but think big and we have to create a very favorable policy environment and a very competitive environment to be able to break in uh, where we need to break in and actually establish ourselves as a maritime power you know we often confuse naval power with maritime power 
India is a naval power, all right. But I'm not so sure that we are yet a maritime power. And we have to become a maritime power within the next uh, couple of decades. The Maritime Vision 2030, comp uh, coupled with the, uh, with Sagarmala, which was in 2015, the Sagarmala port-led uh, development program, is a very comprehensive and milestone-based program. And that is the good part about it. So while we used to, we had a Maritime Agenda 2010 to 2020, it didn't quite achieve the results it was meant to achieve. It fell far short of the expectations. But I think this 2020 to 2030 with the right kind of thrust, we may not get to where we want to be into a 2030, but if you're close to that, then we are on the right track. So I think you're right. We need to, this, these two, this ship repair facility and the shipyard will be game changers. I have been in coaching shipyard. I was commanding a naval ship, one of the largest naval ships, a tanker of 50,000 tons. We did a six month refit in Cochin. I was there, right there at the scene, supervising the refit of my ship. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see the level of efficiency at which Cochin Shipyard worked even then. And I'm talking of about, about almost 18 years ago. So that's a yard which has the potential. It's built the aircraft carrier. India is looking to build larger aircraft carriers of 65,000 tons. We now have a facility where we can build an aircraft carrier of 65,000 tons. We can dock an aircraft carrier of 65,000 tons. So this is indeed a game changer, as you were mentioning. Yeah, it, it certainly will be. But what further now needs to be done? Uh, you know, because already the start has been made, Professor Nalapath, but what next uh, is needed? Today, I want to point out the importance of having Indian ships. Now, you have, for example, had something, something called the Karma Home Conference. Now, many years ago, I analyzed the data and I found that there was what seemed to me to be a consistent way in which ships going from India with Indian exports, somehow they were more expensive than ships coming into India with imports into India. Now, there are certain countries, for example, China is a major shipbuilder. They have a lot of shipping lines. I'm quite certain that Chinese ships coming into India uh, with Chinese goods, let's say, uh, would be uh, the, the cost of transportation would be fixed much lower than if the same ships were to be used by Indian products being shipped outside. So these are the invisible ways in which, you know, uh, countries that have got their own uh, ships, they and their own shipping lines, they benefit and it and that benefit cuts across a, a lot of activities. Now, so far, the aircraft carriers are concerned. Thank God that, you know, that uh, Cochin Shipyard is being used to build that. And I'd like to say that the Navy has been handicapped, quite frankly, because we've had to rely on foreign carriers. And we need aircraft carriers, no question about that. And some of the, I mean, I, I don't want to say anything now, but, you know, in, in the past, there have been, for example, uh, carriers that were, that were got, which were more expensive to maintain uh, than any, than any ca ca carrier uh, elsewhere in the world. So this is a problem that India has faced for a long time. We need ships. We need we need all, all kinds of uh, combat platforms uh, at sea and building them ourselves. We can build them to our specifications, to our needs. And the same goes with a panoply of defense equipment. And I want to end by saying, Uday, that across the world, I can tell you, across friendly countries, let's talk about French shoring. Let's not talk about countries that are hostile to India. But friendly to India, India can be a wonderful platform for producing a range of defense items. And here again, for many decades, we held ourselves back by this policy of not relying on the private sector and various other ways. Now, I'm sorry to say that, you know, in India, in the past, starting something was very difficult, but destroying something was very easy. And unfortunately, a lot of uh, hostile actors were basically concentrating their attention on having, you know, uh, uh, elements in the Indian system who were not really patriotic, uh, destroying uh, 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 items that could have been made in India in favor of items that could be imported from abroad. So all that kind of thing has been going on. And now, again, there's a check on that. So I think the last 14 years under Prime Minister Modi has been a welcome change. And I presume that the next five years, the next 10 years, is going to see more of that. But the fact is, Uday, as a country, we have been responsible for shooting ourselves in on both feet. 
and partly because of bad policy and partly because of bad personnel. I'm happy that these infirmities are being addressed and addressed at speed because that is what we need to ensure that we can be security conscious and we can be adequately, in a sense, grow adequately in a world that is highly competitive. Thank you, Uday. All right. Uh, let me uh, quickly uh, uh, draw in Akash Jindal now at this point. I believe he has uh, finally joined us now. Uh, Akash, uh, if, if you can hear me now, uh, what do you make of this uh, project in Kochi? How big a game changer uh, will it be? And what's the shipbuilding potential of India? The untapped shipbuilding potential of India, rather. Yeah, Uday, firstly, sorry for joining live. Good afternoon to everybody, especially to Professor Madhav Nalapak. Now, I think it's a great thing. It's a great thing which has happened for Indian economy because ultimately the global business, the global transportation has to be on ships. So such a uh, big facility for ships, repair facility for ships, simply adds to Indian economy, India's strength. This is something great, which is there for India because see, India now is becoming bigger and much bigger as far as global arena is concerned, whether it's economy, whether it's overall presence, in every age and every field. See, now we all know we are the fifth largest economy. In another three years, we are expected to be the third biggest economy. And now, initially, when I used to talk about Indian economy performing, outperforming any other, uh, uh, all other economies, there were people who were skeptical and would say things about China. Now it is proven in front of the entire world that India has raced ahead of China also. China, we all know there are so many issues like debt issues, real estate issues, then deflation issues, then unemployment issues. But India, under the talented leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as Professor Madhav Nalapath rightly pointed out, is growing like anything. All decisions are being taken in positive spirit and the decisions are being implemented. The best thing about this government, current government is that whatever is being planned, the government ensures whether the government is doing or private sector is doing, smooth implementation. So that is something which definitely is working for our advantage, India's advantage. And that's why we are the fastest growing economy now. Now we all know we are quite close to being 4 trillion US dollar economy. And other data also point out the way India is growing. See now, this year we saw economy like Germany, which is the fourth biggest economy of the world, or the biggest economy in the Europe. They had two quarters of negative GDP growth. Now, geopolitical tensions had an impact on the entire world, whether it's Russia-Ukraine war, whether it's Israel-Hamas issue or the Red Sea thing. But still, India managed to be a performer much, much better. India performed much, much better than all other rival economies. Now, China is also much behind us. But clearly, I think things like that are going to add to India's strength in all ways. So I think it's a great thing. It's definitely going to help India ship manufacturing, ship repair, everything is going to help India grow much, much bigger, much, much stronger and it's going to add to India's advantage. All right, I'll leave the last word uh, to Captain Sham Kumar before I slip into a break. Captain Sham Kumar, your closing comment. Uh, surely, we are looking at a maritime hub at Kochi as one stop for uh, shipbuilding and repair facilities. You see, there are many times uh, in Indian waters uh, and in the sea lanes of communication, there have been emergencies when ships uh, flying through these lanes have to go to Singapore or Dubai, which is far and obviously in case of distress, it becomes very difficult. So one thing I would like to say that the is emergency repair facilities, six of them coming with by crane transfer, lifting up and then carrying out repair in a quick manner. That means a fast re repair facilities will instill confidence in seafarers, number one. Number two, for defense point of view, obviously with the larger capacity uh, building yard, 70,000, we are looking for a third carrier also. And also, we are also looking at a, 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 a place where all the things are together. Petroleum transfer, we have a good channel in Kochi. We have sufficient depth of water and we have the mooring buoys where petroleum transfers can take place. So larger ships are already visiting. Carriers are already re being repaired and the new ships and Beningham Harbour next door. This area is going to be surely seeing a lot of happenings in near future in maritime uh, uh, activities. And therefore, it's in right direction, right step, right time. Over to you there. 
Okay, and, and uh, yes, and uh, Anil is suggesting uh, you can also have a quick closing comment because the fact is, you know, there is huge potential, but obviously there are some additional, you know, incentives that perhaps government will have to give so that we can tap this spending potential, isn't it? I agree with you entirely. We we've now set the wheels in motion. We have to make sure that this momentum doesn't break. The policy environment is so created that it supports all this activity. Uh, we are, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves and start talking ourselves as a major shipbuilder in the world. We still got a long way to go. But if we continue in this in this vein, then certainly in a few years from now, we will be a force to reckon with whether it's shipbuilding, ship repair, ship recycling, and even in our even in our transshipment capability, our port capability. Because if India grows at the rate at which it is expected to grow and to become a five trillion economy by 2025 or 26 and a 10 trillion economy by 2032, uh, our trade is going to increase exponentially. And we need to have adequate port facility, adequate shipbuilding facility, adequate facility in every aspect of the maritime domain to be able to cope with that sort of uh, growth. And I think that is where this is a very positive start. We have to stick to the maritime agenda, the maritime vision 2030, which has been outlined. And I'm sure if we continue to do so, make the right investments, uh, make certain places centers of maritime excellence and maritime clusters as was planned in the Sagarmala program, then we are definitely on the right track. And yes, in the years to come, it will be a game changer. There is no doubt about that. All right, uh, let's leave it at that. My thanks to uh, all of our guests for joining us on this discussion. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.